cut to where it gets popped and honey. What's up guys? It's your girl Carletta V Esquire in Training back with another video. In today's video, I'll be sharing some law school lingo. So let's get into it. First, I have IRAC and CRAC, also known as CRAC. These words are just your standard briefing formats. So pretty much when you get ready to brief a case or get ready to answer your um, exam questions or anything like that, you'll use one of these formats for your professor. Um, your professor will let you know which one he or she prefers. They're very simple. And if you guys would like a how-to on those briefing formats, let me know in the comments below. Next, we have poop. <laughs> I was too shook when I first heard them say poop in law school. Like, that's probably the last place you would think you would hear the word poop, right? Right. Poop actually stands for property of other persons. Um, so pretty much all poop is, is just like someone else's old, um, notes, outline or something for a course. I'll say getting poop helps because you don't have to, um, you know, work as hard trying to study, trying to formulate your own outline because you kind of got something to bounce off of but literally you just have something to bounce off of. I wouldn't recommend anybody just take somebody else's poop and use it and that's just their holy grail for how to get through a course. Like some things you're just not gonna understand the way another person understood it. So how they notes is laid out might not be how your notes need to be laid out for you to get it. Got it, good. Next we have my favorite it depends it depends like this is a lawyer's go-to when you don't know the answer when you're unsure um it depends that is your answer that's always your answer you never 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 guarantee mm -mm. Mm -mm. you never guarantee even if you are 99.9% .9 sure there's a guarantee, you never guarantee. So you always say, it depends. Reasonable. Now reasonable, you would think, oh, that's a term we use in everyday life, like reasonable. Um, oh, that's a reasonable price, blah, blah, blah. You know, something like that, right? And it pretty much has the same meaning um except for reasonable is used to create a standard for a lot of different situations that the court analyzes so for instance in tort law you have the reasonable person standard next we have holding so we, this is another term that we use in everyday life but instead of it being slang holding in law school actually means the court's reasoning so when you hear your professor say well give me the holding they just want you to tell them exactly what the court's reasoning was behind why they did what they did you get it pretty simple pretty simple next i have res judicata like this is probably my favorite word to say, res judicata. <laughs> and it might be yours. This is another term that you're gonna hear. Um, You're not gonna hear it like often, often. I'll take that back. You might hear it often. Yeah, you, you might hear it often. Um, res judicata basically means case has already been settled and it's not gonna be heard again. So when you see a case has already been heard and it's been settled and then the plaintiff tries to come back and basically sue for the same thing, 
they can't do that because in that case it'll be res judicata we've already resolved that issue we're not going backwards jurisdiction jurisdiction you'll hear this term a lot in bcp or civil procedure it simply means the court's authority over a case there's two different types you have personal and subject matter personal that is over the person so your plaintiff defendant pretty much trying to figure out if that person can even be sued within this court can this judge even make a ruling against this person whereas for a subject matter jurisdiction you're looking at whether or not the court can even hear the claim appeal Appeal, bots up, bots up, appeal, hey, appeal, yeah, no. <laughs> so with appeal, that one's another simple one. Um, you'll hear this again in like BCP, Civ Pro. You're basically trying to get the court to review a already tried case. So you want them to take a look at. The facts of the case look at what the trial court did and how they decided and see if they made the right decision you're just asking the court for a second pair of eyes and lastly writ of certiorari i think i said it right <laughs> um i never can say it right i don't think anybody can say it right but writ of certiorari, the Supreme Court has great discretion over the cases that they get to hear. So pretty much you're writing the writ to ask them to listen to you and hear you out and make a decision on your case. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned some law school lingo and you guys are ready to jump right in and participate in class and you're not feeling lost. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.